Hello everyone and welcome to another resume lecture regarding the pathological in waves. We are trying here to have like a resume of this topic because of course it is distributed between STEMI and non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. So our ILO is this lecture is to understand how to diagnose pathological T wave and what is their clinical significance. Of course, we understood that the pathological T waves are the initial Q waves appearing in the complex. They are considered as the only diagnostic change of myocardial infarction because, as we understood, that ST elevation may occur in the complex of reversible myocardial ischemia, as in the case of coronary valve spasms and also in the context of STEMI, but pathological Q waves are usually associated with myocardial infarction. Usually they exceed 40 milliseconds in duration and their depth is more than 25% of the ensuing R wave. In the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction released by the AC in 2018, they put criteria for the ACG changes associated with prior MI in access of LVH or left bundle. First of all, any Q wave in lead V2 or V3 in more than 20 milliseconds would give us conflict in these two leads. Of course, we can notice that these two ECG leads are peculiar as they have a separate cut point for the ST elevation and separate cut point for the pathological Q wave from the other ECG leads. The second one is Q wave more than or equal 30 milliseconds and more than or equal 1 millimeter depth or QS complex in any two contiguous leads like 1 EVL from V1 to V6. 2, 3, and EVF, and then R wave more than 40 milliseconds in V1, V2 with R distribution more than 1 with a concordant of the T waves in the absence of conduction defect. So we can notice here, of course, that any one of these criteria can be assigned for primary MI. But the last one, does it remind us with something familiar for us? Yes, of course, posterior MI. We remember the criteria for the posterior MI which were horizontal ST depression more than or equal 0.5 mm V1 to V4, total R wave with R is ratio more than 1, R wave duration more than 30 milliseconds, and upright T waves. And so here, the R wave duration, which is exceeding 30 milliseconds in this case, is considered as a pathological Q wave. And we understood why and what's the explanation for this, because of course the V1 to 3 is the G lead in case of a true MI, are considered as a mirror image of the actual ECG pattern with posterior ECG leads. In this ECG example, we can see pathological Q waves in V2 to V3 plus residual ST elevation. So, of course, this appearance here is suggestive of pathological Q waves in anterior leads, most probably caused by anterior STEMI, and according to the clinical presentation, we can decide whether it is acute STEMI and ongoing infarction or it is old infarction. In this ECG also, we can see that there are initial Q waves in the pure leads and they are fulfilling the criteria as, of course, they are exceeding 30 milliseconds. And so we are speaking here about pathological Q waves in the pure leads. And here the ST segment seems to be isoelectric, so it may indicate all in pure MI. But of course, I should check the clinical context in which the patient is in in order to make a decision whether it is acute, ongoing myocardial infarction or old infarction. Let's ask ourselves some questions regarding the pathological Q waves because sometimes pathological Q waves raise a lot of question marks in our minds and may be mysterious. First of all, what do the pathological Q waves signify clinically? Of course, the development of new Q waves in the case of myocardial necrosis, which usually starts within a few hours after the acute MI or even within a few minutes sometimes. So, pathological Q wave equal myocardial necrosis. Second question, are the always permanent finding in ECG? The surprise transient Q waves may be observed sometimes during acute myocardial ischemia or uncommonly or rarely during acute MI with successful reperfusion. So pathological Q wave doesn't mean that the patient has persistent and irreversible damage. No, sometimes they are transient and they may improve after successful reperfusion. So pathological Q waves should not be considered as a sign of irreversible damage. Of course, one of the false beliefs is that the pathological Q waves are a sign of completed MI with no benefit of revascularization due to myocardial necrosis. As you mentioned here, it is caused by myocardial necrosis. I'm sorry to tell you, it is completely wrong and please, don't put this false notion in your mind that pathological QM are a sign of completed MI 
And when you see a patient with a STEMI and he's having still chest pain and having pathological key waves which are frank and fulfilling the criteria, you omit for him the chance for reperfusion just because of the pathological key wave. So remember, pathological key wave should not be considered as a sign of completed MI and should not prohibit urgent revascularization. The clinical presentation is much, much more important and the presence of symptoms is a sign that this myocardium needs salvage and screening for rescue. Let's ask another question. Do pathological key occur to me only? I think the answer is easy. They more commonly appear as STEMI, but they can appear non STEMI with extensive subendocardial infarction. Let's remind ourselves with this ECG example from the lecture of PRS voltage in non ST elevation with chronic syndrome. This patient was having resistant angina chest pain. His first ECG showed normal sinus rhythm with normal R wave progression. Then the R wave progression is delayed till the appearance of pathological Q in V1 to V4 with low PRS voltage in the last one. So what is the explanation for this? The explanation, of course, is due to the extensive subendocardial infarction in a patient with non-STEMI, resulting in reduced voltage of action potential, reflected in the ACG as reduced R wave amplitude and development of pathological Q waves with extensive necrosis. So here there is no ST elevation, as there is no transmural infarction, is extensive subendocardial infarction. And so it is a piecemeal necrosis resulting in a terminology called R wave amputation with the appearance of the pathological view. And this indicates non STEMI with very high clinical risk and is considered an indication to go urgently for revascularization, not just early invasive strategy due to the embedding loss of myocardium and usually the patient is having resistant chest pain. So this proves the fact that pathological Q wave can develop a patient with non STEMI as well as a patient with STEMI, so it is not exclusive for STEMI to have pathological Q wave. That's why the MI classification of Q wave MI and non Q wave MI, which is an old classification, has been replaced by STEMI and non STEMI. So, in this patient, is a high risk sign in ECG, and this patient needs to go urgently to the cath lab. So, reminding ourselves again, MI classification of Q wave non Q wave is obsolete and the present pathological Q wave doesn't necessarily indicate all MI. And now the question, can they appear in patient without chronic heart disease? So what I mean, that the patient doesn't have MI and is having pathological Q in his ECG? Yes, of course. In any structural heart disease which is characterized by myocardial necrosis resulting in fibrosis and scarring can result in pathological Q wave as in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, and also in cardiac myelodosis. So, of course, in this ECG example, we can see here that the patient is having pathological Q waves, and if you relate the 2 and the 3, is having low voltage complex, and the pathological Q wave, this patient, of course, is having pathological Q wave, but not caused by MI, that's why it's called pseudo infarct pattern because this patient doesn't doesn't have any primary artery disease and this patient was having cardiac amyloidosis which is one of the infiltrative disease of the myocardium resulting in low QRS voltage and the appearance of pathological Q waves. Another question what increases sensitivity for the pathological Q waves to be caused by MI rather than any other structural heart disease? Number one, the presence of pathological key waves in several leads or lead group of specific vascular territory, of course, increase the possibility that it is caused by MI. Association with ST segment or TOB changes increase the liability for ischemic heart disease, and duration more than 40 milliseconds increases sensitivity for MI. So let's see this ECG example here. We are having pathological key waves from V2, 3, and V4. They are exceeding 30 or even 40 milliseconds here. And the cord depth is more than one millimeter, so they are fulfilling criteria for pathological Q wave. They are occurring mainly in the anteroceptor leads, and they are associated with ST elevation in these leads. So I'm speaking about pathological Q waves in anteroceptor leads, most probably caused by anteroceptor STEMI rather than any other structural heart disease. Another question: Can pathological Q waves appear in normal individuals? seen by a strange question, it is called pathological, so can, how can they appear in normal individuals? Sometimes improperly placement may result in the false appearance of new Q waves or QS complex as compared with the previous ECGs for a patient whose ECGs were normal. So in this case it may lead to false interpretation of MI. 
So we need to confirm by repeat the ECG recording with correct placements and ask about any ischemic symptoms of this patient with is having chest pain now and any previous episodes of chest pain before assuming that this patient is having an on. For example, here in this ECG, the patient was having pathological few waves and inferior leads, denoting the presence of inferior MI, whether it is acute MI or it was all unrecognized MI according to the clinical presentation. But there is a strange thing. The patient is having positive complex in ABR, and so it is caused by limb lead reversal. Limb lead reversal, of course, has many, pres many presentations in the ECG according to which two leads are reversed with the two upper limb leads, the two lower limb leads, or one in upper limb with one lower limb lead. So this patient needs to repeat the ECG again. The problem is that I have put the ECG leads correctly with correct placement and the patient denies any symptom and still this pathological few waves. So in this case, I'm faced with a diagnosis of silent or unrecognized MI, maybe recent, maybe old, I don't know. And of course, I would need imaging technique like echocardiography or even more sophisticated techniques like my heart perfusion scan or cardiac MRI to exclude any abnormal myocardial motion, thickening or thinning in the region of interest. For example, I see pathological key waves in the inferior leads, so I would be focusing on the inferior wall. So, in the case of the patient having pathological key waves in his ECG and denying any symptoms or any recent acute coronary syndrome or any recent coronary stenting, I would assume that the patient is having silent or unrecognized MI. And of course, in the universal definition, they have put criteria for the prior or silent unrecognized MI. Any one of these criteria, of course, means a diagnosis for this, like pathological key waves with or without symptoms in the absence of non ischemic causes. Imaging evidence of loss of viable myocardium in a pattern consistent with ischemic etiology or pathological finding of prior MI. So, of course, pathological Q waves can occur in both STEMI or non STEMI as a sign of infarction. So, pathological Q wave is one of the sure signs of ECG of myocardial infarction, although they may occur in other diseases apart from MI. So at the end of this lecture, we understood today how to diagnose pathological keywords in ECG and what is their clinical significance. Our take-home measures that pathological keywords are usually assumed as a sign of old MI, but of course, don't forget that pathological keywave in a patient with chest pain should be dealt with as a myocardium dying in pieces, not already dead and are arranging for the funeral for it. No, pathological keywords should be properly understood in order not to omit the chance for pre-vascularization. Thank you very much for your watching.